As the number of COVID-19 cases drop in Minnesota, vaccinations have stagnated somewhat. State health officials hope that will change as vaccines eventually get approved for younger children. Health experts say vaccinations are the key to ending the pandemic. And with the Pfizer vaccine approved for middle school aged children, the Wyzetta School District is offering up an opportunity for families to roll up their sleeves and return to pre-pandemic life. Delane Cleveland has more. You feel nervous at all? No. Okay, great. At Minnesota's largest high school. One, two, three, and we're in. Officials from the Wyzetta School District transformed one of its gyms into a makeshift clinic on Wednesday. As you can see, the flow has been very smooth, very little waiting. Very little waiting for Pfizer's version of the COVID-19 vaccine, which the FDA announced earlier this month could be administered to children between the ages of 12 to 15. Why is that a freshman Greta Becker was one of many who jumped at the opportunity? I think for sure I was kind of like as soon as I can get it, I'll get it just for the sake of the people around me. And like I have a parent who actually has diabetes, so it's just like a another precaution in order to keep them safe. Safety, along with returning to a pre-pandemic way of life, was on the minds of the kids who signed up for this vaccination clinic. I think it's great because then we have a lot of chance of getting COVID. The district partnered with Community Care Clinics of Minnesota to make this free two-day vaccine event possible for anyone who's interested. And local health officials say it's coming at a good time. There's a shift. We're now seeing that more um, of our students um, especially our adolescents, are testing positive. And so there, because of that, there's a very much demand for vaccinations in this age group. Many of the students rolled up their sleeves and got their shots with no issues whatsoever. But a few were a little more apprehensive and required some reassuring words before getting poked. Take a deep breath. Yeah, I promise. Over. Get over I promise. There you go. You got it. It's done. It's all done. Yes. Yay. All told, the district expects about 2,000 people to get their vaccinations over the course of this two-day clinic. Then everyone will come back again on June 9th and 10th to get their second shots. At Wysetta High School, Delane Cleveland, CCX News. Here's a look at the latest numbers. The state's seven-day case positivity is below 5% for the first time since mid-March. The percentage of the state's total population who have received at least one dose of the vaccine is above 49%. Families can sign up for the vaccine through the state's Vaccine Connector website. Osseo is getting ready for the city's first major in-person event since COVID-19 restrictions started last year. The city will hold a vintage car show at Boarboom Veterans Park on May 22nd. And Sonia Gowen shows us what residents are doing to make sure the park looks its best. It's very satisfying for us. Dave and Rosanna Garibaldi. See, we do the street also. Don't mind getting their hands dirty. It's very calming. The avid gardeners live across from Boarboom Veterans Park. I noticed that nobody was taking care of the plants. They weren't pruning them and there were weeds growing up. I just said, you know what, I'm going to start doing it myself. For the past three years, the couple has been working to make sure the flowers and other greenery blooms. We've been really blessed in our lives and uh, we've always had what we needed and, and we want to give back. For the first year, they volunteered, and the city liked their work, so they hired the Garibaldis. It brought a lot of joy to a lot of people, and that's, that's important. This spring, the Osseo residents are racing against the clock to get ready for the Intermarquee Vintage Foreign Car Show. We've got a lot more to do here in the park. With the cool weather, we weren't able to get out. The Garibaldis say they don't consider this work, but an act of love. This is our home, and we want it to look pretty. I'm going to talk beautiful. We feel like beautifying the city is something that uh, we can do and maybe make life a little more pleasant for other people. In Osseo, Sonia Goins, CCX News. Brooklyn Park moved forward on purchasing vacant land near North Hennepin Community College that would be used to build apartments, some of which would be affordable. The Economic Development Authority will purchase about six acres of land that the Minnesota state system deemed surplus. Duffy Development Company plans to construct two 75-unit mixed-income apartments and a daycare on the site. The purchase would happen in two phases with some tax increment financing involved, so the exact timeline is unclear. 
The affordable units available would be about 30% of market rate or about $582 for a one bedroom. A company moving from Plymouth to Maple Grove hopes to get state funds that could help it launch a new product line and grow jobs right here in the Northwest Metro. Pelican Biothermal is applying for a $300,000 forgivable loan offered through a state jobs fund. The money would help the company buy new machinery and equipment. Pelican Biothermal makes temperature controlled packaging and has played a role in the shipment of the COVID-19 vaccine. The company expects to add as many as 50 new employees in its new Maple Grove space over the next three years. Food banks are ramping up before school lets out for the summer, which is when they see increased need. We do expect to see the need grow as the summer goes on. We don't see it letting up. Second Harvest Heartland in Brooklyn Park got a big boost on Wednesday from High V. The grocery store donated 5,500 hams to this food bank alone. High V says it's one way to help food banks prepare for the summer months. We find that food banks need proteins during the summer a lot, and so uh, with ongoing COVID, uh, there's a lot of need. One in nine Minnesotans are facing hunger right now, and so this is something we thought we could do to help the community. Hy-Vee plans to donate more than 7,200 hams throughout the Midwest in communities served by Hy-Vee stores. We posted more on this story on our website, ccxmedia.org. Two-team formats for meets are often used in track and field to reward programs with a number of good athletes. One of those meets took place Tuesday. Osseo High School, the site for a mixed section true team meet with five schools competing. Let's start with a boys discus throw and Osseo's Maxwell Hammonds. His best toss is 150 feet and seven inches to win. Hammonds also finished third in the shot put. Girls 1600 meter run and Totino Grace's Emily Myers way out in front. She wins in five minutes, 12.33 seconds. Jules Davis of Osseo is 20 seconds back as the runner up just ahead of Armstrong, Caitlin Osani and Lex Davis of Osseo. Boys 1600 and Armstrong finishes one two. Noah Brecker wins in four minutes, 31.41 seconds. Owen Hansman is less than a second behind. Cole Hersey of Osseo finished third and was second in the 800. Girls open 400 and Caitlin Byer of Rogers wins in one minute, 2.07 seconds. Clea Cesar of Armstrong in lane six finishes second, right ahead of her teammate Carly Fisher. Boys 400 meters and OJ Jallo and Vaughn Ruska of Osseo are the top two finishers. Jallo wins with a time of 52.11 seconds. Alex Ahmed of Armstrong is third. Girls long jump, this is Osseo's Bernice Barlow. She goes 15 feet, seven inches here and finishes fifth. Barlow plays second in the triple jump. Boys triple jump, Armstrong has the top three place winners. This is Carlos Ayala, who goes 20 feet, two inches, and finishes second between the Falcons, Eustace McGowan and Peyton Newburn. Results from Tuesday's competition will be used to score each team's respective section true team meet. Maple Grove was hoping to get back to the state tournament in softball after winning the Class 4A title in 2019. Jay Wilcox has highlights from their latest win. Champlin Park makes the short trip to Maple Grove for Northwest Suburban softball. Pitcher Bella Daniels is sharp early for Maple Grove, retiring the first nine Rebels hitters for three perfect innings. She gets some defensive help too. Danny Strom makes the nice sliding catch on Aaron Reardon's foul fly down the left field line. Leading 2-0, Sidney Hockett bounces to short and the throw home is just late to get Speedy Strom and the Crimson go up 3-0 in the fourth inning. In the fifth, Abby Meads connects for Champlin Park. She drives a solo shot to center to pull the Rebels within 3-1, her second homer of the year. In the sixth, Hockett answers for Maple Grove with a blast of her own. That gives them an important insurance run to make it 4-1 Crimson. And Daniels retires the side in order in the seventh as Maple Grove improves to 12-3 with a 4-1 win over Champlin Park. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. In boys lacrosse, teams are tuning up for the playoffs with just a week remaining in the regular season. Champlin Park hosting Osseo Park Center in high school boys lacrosse Monday evening. 
First quarter and Roy Johnson passes to Hudson Karasek, who goes low with his shot to score to give the Rebels a two to nothing lead. Aiden Miller passes to Jack Jurasek and he rips a shot into the Osseo Park Center net and it's four to nothing. OPC gets on the board before the end of the quarter. Colin Garrity comes out from behind the Rebels net and goes up high with a shot. It's four to one after one. Second quarter, a great effort by Miller to work his way free to shoot and score and push the Rebels lead. Zach Jensen gets one back for Osseo Park Center before the end of the second quarter. His goal makes it 6-2 at halftime. Third quarter, Will Steven makes a great play for OPC. Coming from behind the Champlin Park net, spins away from two defenders to score. OPC within three at 7-4. But that's as close as they get. Rebel sophomore Christian Capitan nets a goal before the end of the third quarter. Champlin Park uses a balanced scoring attack and plenty of goals to earn a 12-5 win. Jack Stemper netting a goal here in the fourth quarter. The Rebels are now 5-3 on the season. OPC drops to 1-8.